Hello and welcome to Design Education Talk by the New Art School. Our guest today is Amit Patel. Welcome, Amit. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So tell us about you and your work. Sure. So um, I'm a very proud uh, Canadian, uh, and I'll start with that because that's kind of, you know, uh, something I'm super proud of. I was born and raised in, in Toronto, uh, and I moved to London about 19 years ago. Uh, and today I am the creative director of a design school called Experience House. We're based in Shoreditch here in London. Uh, we offer training courses across design education training courses across uh, the B2C market. So we have individuals who are roughly 24 to 40 years old that will come in and take courses with us. We also offer training and capability building for teams and organizations. That's where I spend most of my time at the moment creating bespoke programs for different organizations around the world. And we do a lot of work with colleges, universities, et cetera, where we're going in and, and, and teaching younger people about design or entrepreneurship, innovation, uh, et cetera. So really enjoy everything we do. It's very varied. No day is the same as each other. Um, and it's just all about kind of, yeah, educating and, and sharing everything around design and innovation. Fantastic. So tell us a bit about how you got into all this, how you started. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always had an interest in design when I was growing up. And, you know, in when I mean design, it was the design of sneakers, the design of buildings. Uh, I really enjoy the design of stadiums, for example. But I didn't know what I necessarily wanted to study, if I wanted to study that at university. I don't think I was really even made aware of all of the possibilities that at that time. Um, so I decided to, uh, I did a, my undergrad degree in math and went into uh, the world of banking. So I worked for a bank in Canada for a couple of years. And I was very fortunate to work on a uh, project where I was traveling a lot, especially in the Caribbean. When that project ended, I just kind of didn't know where I wanted to go. There was no, there were no kind of creative or design roles in the bank at that time. So I decided to leave uh, the city and, and say, I'm going to go and live somewhere else for a couple of years and then come back to Toronto. And that's what led me to London. So I worked uh, for a, a pretty major construction company called Lang O'Rourke, did very similar things that I was doing in banking, systems, processes, uh, looking at you know, how do we inc improve the margins on, on projects within that industry or for this company rather. And then start getting involved in getting involved in kind of building out and designing digital tools that were needed for construction and to kind of improve the way that construction was, and projects were being delivered. I was very fortunate then to be invited to go and work on the Crossrail project here in London, so the Elizabeth Line, very much in the design stages of the project, and that kind of was just an amazing opportunity when I look back now. You sometimes don't appreciate it until you've left the project, but the amount of people that we worked with, uh, they were some of the brightest people in that industry and kind of public infrastructure projects, worked on designing lots of different tools. Um, I looked after the rollout of a document management system, very, work, very much working closely with a lot of consultants, rolling that out. But after that, I, I decided to switch gears and start to work in startups. Uh, so started kind of, I spent a year working on a very, very small startup with three or four people. I was very inspired by the founder who had had a lot of success working with his previous startup, started advising other startups, and then eventually got asked to do some guest lectures um, at, a, at another school, which is now our competitor. Um, but it was that opportunity to start kind of giving back and guiding and mentoring that I just fell in love with. I obviously hadn't done anything like that, but I really, really enjoyed it. And that kind of worked its way up to teaching on full-time programs, um, still kind of doing a little bit of consulting on the side, but eventually deciding, I think I could build my own thing. And that's where I decided to build Experience House. So we've been running now for just over six years. Oh, wow. And what is different to what you're doing than what anybody else is doing online? Sure, sure. I have to talk about it, this a lot. So, um, yeah, I have to, you know, a lot of people are always asking, uh, you know, what is the difference? And 
I think we have very, very clear uh, differences between others. And I think there are a lot of other fantastic places to go and study. We never kind of, you know, people should take their time and look around. But what stands out for us is, number one, all of our students work on real projects. They All, all they're doing is applying their work on real life projects. And we get these projects from local businesses, local startups, from various accelerators, incubators, business schools, um, you know, just even our own networks where and we've worked with close to 600 startups in the last six years who have provided real life design challenges. So that from our research and us speaking to our students, that's usually the number one reason people come to study with us. And we're looking at expanding that even, even further in the next couple of years. Number two, is our class sizes are much smaller. So they range between eight to 12 people and we never go above that. So our product design part-time class, for example, has been run, I think 47 cohorts. It's always been capped at eight. We never go above eight. Um, and I think that really creates this kind of sense of, I'm gonna get mentored, I'm going to get feedback, I'm going to be, you know, have that those constructive criticisms given to my work. I'm going to be told if I'm doing things the right way or if I need to change approach. If you've got a class of 25, 30 people, you just can't get that guidance. And especially for these people that are taking these programs to career pivot, they need to be know they need to know they're doing things the right way. The third one, and and this is a very important one as well, is especially for those that are studying in person, you're coming into a live working agency. So we're partnered with an agency called Mad Reform. Um, I, in, in fact, I kind of picked out the founders of, uh, of, the, of the CEO and the COO of Mad Reform, and I thought they were fantastic people who I wanted to build, you know, build something with. And now we share this beautiful studio space. So our students, when they come and study either part-time in the class in the evening or full-time during the day, they're literally next to design projects that are ongoing. So they're inspired by the industry. They're getting also getting to network and get feedback by industry designers as well. So that's kind of some of the things that we do that are, are different. Um, and like I said, from our research and us speaking to students, it's the real life projects that a lot of people really, really enjoy. Fantastic. And 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 how and how do um, I mean this this is this is great and this is something I've always advocated for. Uh, with a real life project in, in my own teaching. Uh, however, sometimes it can also, uh, it can be sometimes an obstacle for them to imagine things. So how do you encourage them to go beyond the limitations of, of a real sure, life sure. job? Sure. And this is something that will always come up at certain stages of the project. It might come up really early on and someone might question or challenge the brief or the approach rather, it might come up later on in the, in, the, in the course when they're actually coming up with solutions. When we choose these projects and we choose, in, in fact, sometimes you're choosing the stakeholder more than anything else. Like, is this somebody who will be, understands the process, will be involved in the process, be able to kind of run workshops, give the student insight, maybe access to users, et cetera. There's multiple reasons why we choose particular people to work with for these projects. But we also say, like, look, this is a safe learning environment. We want you to push the boundaries. We want you to inspire that that uh, that stakeholder who's provided this brief as well. We don't want this to necessarily always be constrained because even though they're working on a real-life project, their main intention is to learn. They've come to take a course and to learn. And that is more so important to make sure that they're applying everything that they've gone through and learned rather than just only satisfy the brief. This is a Again, this is education oriented rather than working like a real life agency, which then you would have the constraints and challenges and blocks and risks that you would have to worry about. But here it's make sure that you're applying everything. And as part of that, bring in your curiosity, bring in your exploration, bring in your experimentation so that you can push those boundaries and design something that will even paint a picture of the future for the stakeholder, even if that's not in the brief that was given to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens in the, about employability? So they're already working in the agency, and and, and then what? How is that worked out for the employability of the students? Yeah. So so just to give you a bit of insight into our students, um, they are, like I said, usually roughly twenty four to forty years old, and we have classed them into four kind of categories or four archetypes. We have the curious newbie, we have the career pivoter. 
we have the motivated uh, upskiller and the experienced refresher. And most of our students will fall into one of those categories. Most of them are working already in a existing career. They may be already a designer, experienced designer, service designer. They could be working in a totally different field and looking to pivot in their career as well. So again, as we go through the projects and the courses with them, we're always talking about in, connecting them with industry uh, professionals. We do interview preparation. We do case study preparation. All of these things that prepares them for that next step. Some of them will be looking for a new job or a new role. Some of them are taking their skills back to where they are already working and very happy. But we are always thinking about not just jobs, but like just giving them the skills that gives them the confidence and credibility to move on in their career path as well. So that support is there. Um, like I said, some of them will be immediately looking for a new role afterwards. Uh, some of them will be very happy with what they're doing. They're just getting those new skills or refreshing skills um, and maybe looking at kind of what their career path is going to look like in a couple of years as well. So you're educating students that already have a degree? Yes. 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 So, they so they already, already have, have a degree. degree. Some, some, some will be, be maybe, maybe doing, their, doing degree their degree and may come and take a course in the summer. Some might do, it may just finish their degree and come and top up with an extra course. Some are already well into their career and are uh, just again, upskilling or refreshing as well. Or we do get a lot of students who have never done a degree and are taking these courses as part of figuring out where they want to go as well. Could, but do you think that the degree is, 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 is essential for what you're doing or, or what you're doing uh, can, can, can it replace the degree? This one is uh, something that I, um, it's, 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 it's a, a very interesting question because, I, I, again, it comes up a lot. I think it can replace. I think the boot camps and, that, and, and, and doing multiple courses can replace the degree. I think it depends on what you're thinking of going to study, for example, and, and thinking about, okay, well, could I craft a career doing other courses to move into this kind of um, design space? I think the degree could be is definitely replaceable. At the same time, personally, I'm kind of conflicted with that because I really enjoyed my university experience. I think it kind of led to what I'm doing now, but there were so many other softer skills that I was able to pick up that necessarily didn't come from my academic studying, but just networking, the social skills. I think there's other things that university can provide you that ultimately makes worth going makes it worth going to university but if i was looking at doing uh, a degree versus a number of short courses to get me into a particular space i think a number of the short courses boot camps approach etc could replace the degree but how would your education be viewed by an employer uh, to a graduate that didn't have a degree how, how would you think that that will be viewed well we're already seeing I mean, we've already seen mo- many many cases where our education is, is practical, it's real life projects, it's portfolio building, case study building. So, and, you know, obviously we've seen m- many times in the news over the last four or five years that, you know, a lot of companies are now kind of dismissing the requirement to have the degree. Like I said, I think there's a lot of other skills that the degree does give you. So I don't want to ever say d- degree is useless because I, I don't fundamentally believe that. But I do think that our courses and, and, and other institutions that provide similar courses The students that are coming out with projects and case studies and real life application, and don't forget the number of hours that they're spending on these these projects can represent a a good body of work that makes it very attractive to, uh, to employers. We've seen a number of students who have done degrees and then immediately come and top up with a part time course or a full time program, even with us. And that even strengthens what they want to go and do, or it allows them to pivot. So, for example, you might do a degree say in politics or in history or uh, in English, for example, and then you can come and do a UX bootcamp. And the combination of those two things is very attractive to an employer as well, right? So I think there's there's an element of combining the two, but also the fact that, hey, a number of short courses will give you very practical experience that then um, could be very uh, attractive to an employer, especially to get into a junior or first role as well. So how do you see the future of employability for, for, for the graduates in general? 
in design. Yeah, I think I think the the the, the necessary you know the, the skills that you're going to have uh, moving forward um, is going to be rooted is in this kind of real life application, the ability to, you know, be human centered and empathy and storytelling. I think all of these kind of skills will be the future of what employers are going to be looking for. And if there probably already is, even especially in some of the big consultancies, for example, they're looking to hire kind of design oriented minds. They're looking to hire people that can, can, you know, use empathy in the design process. They're looking for people that are curious and will explore and not be afraid to think big, but that narrow it down based on client expectations. That's the same thing in startups. It's the same thing that, you know, councils and, and, and government are going to have to explore as well. So I think these kind of courses will really help people with that. Sometimes it's a bit of a mindset shift. We're already seeing, for example, even this year, we've had medical doctors, we've had radiographers, we've had lawyers, management consultants who are coming to take user experience design courses here. Why? Because it's giving them a mindset shift. It's giving them that ability to then add to their you know, strong careers and strong academic backgrounds, but it's adding this curiosity and experimentation and storytelling that is, again, is going to be the future of employability. And so that's why, again, you know, I, 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 I again, I, I, I never want to say the degree is useless because I really enjoyed my education. So having gone through that experience, I would never say, oh, it was a waste of time because it wasn't to me. But I definitely see that these short courses, again, can, ex can, can partner with or, you know, be tagged on to the degree or, <clears throat> excuse me, or it can replace the degree because it gives so much of these other skills that are going to be required by employers in the future. Mm -hmm. Do you see, do you find if there was no limitations, if you could do whatever you liked in, in your education, would you do something differently? <laughs> One thing that I would love to do, um, and we probably will do it at some stage, is I would want the students to start building their own startups. Or we're building startups that the students are then working on. So it builds this ecosystem where, of course, we would love to bring in real life challenges. But at the same time, it would be amazing to be building our own um, initiatives, our own startups that the students are working on and they get ownership of as well. So the student feels like they're, they're, they're coming in to learn. They are getting to work on something cutting edge. Maybe it's in health tech, fintech, et cetera. But they also get a piece of the pie as well. So you're teaching them the design skills. You're teaching them the storytelling, the curiosity. You're teaching them all the things that are super, super necessary for the future. But you're also giving them a piece of that pie so they really really feel like it this is something that they they're a part of as well so that is something that um we want to explore here is starting to build out our own um startups which i think we will probably start to do at some point next year exciting exciting where do you see the role of ai in all this yeah, I think you know this is something that I was actually reading quite a few articles on 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 some some actually AI topics uh, outside of design, more in kind of the marketing space over the weekend. I think AI will, of course, there's a lot of fear that it's going to replace roles, replace careers, etc. I think we need to embrace it as designers. I think we need to use some of the fantastic tools that are already out there. It's not going away. The tools are only going to get better and better. You have to be using them. You have to be just, again, using that curiosity to say, what do these different platforms do? How can it um, improve my way of working? How can it inspire my way of working? How can it give me ideas that I didn't even think about that then I can go and explore? Uh, and at that way, I don't think it's going to replace. It doesn't have the creativity that a lot of us have as designers or that collaboration that we can then bring to the table, some of the ideas that AI may start start you know giving us. Um, so I think it's something that um, is going to, we almost have to collaborate in a way with AI and to use it as part of our way of working rather than be fearful of it. We need to use it. We need to harness it. And I think it's it's super exciting. I mean, there's so much, I see every day more and more um, people using it in such clever ways. If you don't use it um, and you don't experiment with it, you're going to be very quickly left behind. This is, to me, it's like one of the most fastest moving things that's ever that we've ever seen. And 
if you don't start using it today, three months from now, you're already you're massively, massively behind. So you've got to um, be aware of it and and almost infuse it into your way of working. Not again because it's going to replace you, but it's just because you're learning how to harness the tool and use that as 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 part of your kind of yeah, like I said, your collaboration as a designer. But do you also see clients? starting you to use the same tools they are there a lot of a lot of the um the startups a lot of the the companies that we're working with are starting to think about ai in their own applications absolutely so we have a couple of full-time students on our course right now that are working on a uh they work on a capstone project it's a six-week full-time project and it's a health tech that is using ai to look at kind of the relationships between patients and doctors for a particular um, use case. So startups are starting to use it, um, well, have been using it and are starting to even use it even more. Businesses are obviously starting to u- think about it and be aware of it. And again, if you, you if you aren't staying part of that conversation and uh, aren't being aware of what the use cases are and you know what the latest movements are, then again, you're going to massively fall behind. So I don't think you have a choice at the moment. Again, I don't think it's out of fear. I don't think we should be fearful. I think we should be harnessing and collaborating with it um, and I think that's the that's the kind of the potential of, uh, for us as designers. Wonderful. So, how can our viewers and listeners find you and your work? So, we have our our, our website um, where all of the information. We're actually going through a bit of a refresh, a bit of a brand facelift over the summer. So, we'll be launching a brand new website uh, in probably September time. But you can visit experiencehealth.com. Uh, so as all the detail about all of our courses uh, and our offering, we run regularly run free workshops. We have design conference, hopefully coming back later this year as well, which is very open to the public. We'll have a number of um, talks every month. We invite people in to, uh, uh, we've had a lot of great talks on AI over the summer. So everything's, you can see everything that we have coming up through our website. Uh, for me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm quite active on LinkedIn, um, I'm Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it now. I, I hang out there as well. But LinkedIn is a great place to find me personally and uh, experiencehouse.com for everything that we're doing here. We love to chat to people. We love to collaborate with people. If you've got a project that our students can get in, involved in, fantastic. If you're looking to hire great talent, we've got a lot of people coming through the courses. If you just want to come and learn something new or come to a talk, we've got lots of stuff happening. Um, especially September when summer kind of die, dies down, September, everything picks back up again. Wonderful. So what advice would you like to leave us with? Ah, my number one advice, honestly, is just keep talking to people. I mean, I'm finding it more and more. So I'll just a, a very quick story. Like yesterday, uh, we had new neighbors move in. So where I live, um, new neighbors moved in a couple of months ago and I'd see them. Um, quick wave, but never had a conversation with, with them just yet. But yesterday, um, as I was pulling up to the house in the evening, the new neighbor came across and, and said, hey, just want to say hello. And we just started chatting. And I was kind of in a rush. I had somewhere to be, but I was like, I should chat with him. And I've got to be polite, my new neighbor. And honestly, the amount of insight I got in that 20 minutes, he's a doctor, healthcare professional, massively involved in health tech and innovation. We actually have common friends. Um, and, you know, he's, it's, it's all about collaboration. He's all about networking. It's all about, hey, I could introduce you to this person or I'm working with this person. Love to have a chat with you. And just, I think this whole thing around Experience House has been built as a bit, it's about building an ecosystem and to build that ecosystem, it's all about networking. So just com- have conversations with people. You don't need to go in with an agenda. You don't need to go in with, you're trying to get something out of it, but it's amazing when you go in with that attitude that the the common ground, the common sharing, the common things that you can find with people is is ultimately what allows you to build these ecosystems. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Amit. That was a really interesting conversation. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for having me.